Hey guys, welcome to episode 7. We finished after our last video with Matthew the Thief and Wrath the Horseback Archer joining our group. Um, with Chapter 7 Siblings Abroad, there's something unique about it. There's actually a side quest that you can access, and the only prerequisite to access that side quest is to finish the chapter in under 15 turns. Um, it's an incredibly easy chapter to complete. I don't see it taking longer than maybe, I'd say, six or seven turns for anybody to complete. But just keep in mind as you're playing that if you are able to clear it in under 15 turns, you will have access to a side quest. With that said, let's go ahead and get started on Chapter 7. Lynn takes her leave of Arifin, finding no aid from its spiteful Marquis. Marquise. I still don't know how to freaking say that. Oh well. Now she and her companions resume their march toward Caitlin in earnest, racing against time with her grandfather's life the prize. Harried and impatient, Lynn presses onward. Suddenly a young boy appears and pleads for their assistance. Chapter 7, Siblings Abroad. Please, somebody, somebody, please help. That's enough. Get out now. I want none of your trouble. But sir, why? You were so kind yesterday. I thought you were just two kids, a couple of traveling performers. If those men are chasing you, you must be up to no good. Now get up and get out. You're a plague on decent folk. But, whew, what a mess. Alright, so we're going to start this mission off with what, you know, seems like a young boy being kicked out of a house. I guess, you know, him and another companion uh, were seeking refuge there. And this man, you know, he was kind enough to let them stay there without realizing, you know, exactly what it meant to extend his hand and help. Uh, apparently, they, they come with some baggage. Someone's looking for them. And he wants nothing to do with it, so he's telling them to get out of his house. Which is totally fair. Hmm... We got this second person here. I wonder if that's the person traveling with that little boy. Where are we, Kent? This is Catholic. If we head due south, we'll pass into Kalen. From here, I'd say we're about 10 days ride to Castle Kalen. Alright, so about a 10 days ride. If you look back and remember, um, I believe it was episode 3 where it started off and it said that Lynn was 10 days into her journey. So assuming that, you know, there are no interruptions, if we're a 10 days ride from Castle Caitlin, uh, I'm sure we can probably expect to find ourselves meeting Lynn's grandfather within the next, you know, 3-4 chapters. Assuming we don't run into any delays, of course. 10 days. Pardon me, but... Yes, can I help you? You and your friends, are you mercenaries? And if we are? I need your help. Milady Lindis, you mustn't let your guard down, not even for a child. I know. Forgive me, but we're in a hurry. Is there someone else you can ask? There's no time. An Indian's been... It's my sister. Some men have taken her away. Your sister? Did you say your sister's been accosted? And of course saying, you know hears that a woman is in need and he's gonna jump up and, you know, be himself. Sane. That's right. By some cruel, awful men. I don't know what I'll do without Ninian. Milady Lindis, we must help him. Nonsense, we haven't the time. If the Marquis is as ill as we've heard, we must proceed. Kent, I... I want to help this child. Milady. I'm worried about my grandfather, of course, but this... I cannot sp stand by and let a child be taken from her home. I see. I'm sorry, Kent. I am your loyal retainer. You owe me no apologies. You must do as your heart dictates, my lady. I will follow you no matter where that may lead. Thank you. Ha! Such a noble speech. Ever the true knight, that one. Ah well, you're in luck, lady. Let's go get your sister. Will you lead us to the men who've done this? Uh-huh. They're really tough, so be careful. Leave them to us. We're pretty tough ourselves. Right, hero? Ah, oh no. 
<laughs> Found him. Come on, it's back to Nargle with you. Quiet now. No, let Ninian go. We ain't supposed to kill you, but we can sure rough you up. Get him. Huh? Who do you think you are? Lynn! Let the boy's sister go. Ah. So you want to help the kid, huh? What a shame. You're gonna die for something that don't concern you. You think so, do you? Do we look so meek to you? I think you're in for a terrible shock. Stupid girl. You'll regret those words. Take them down, boys. Starting with this chap chapter, you'll be able to use the preparation screen. On this screen, you can choose who will fight, equip different items, and arrange your formation, among other things. If you have no spe special preparations to make, simply press start. This, this starts the chapter with the same group we were using at the end of the last chapter. Alright, so right here I get to pick my units. I can pick 8 units total, and I've got uh, 10 units that I can select from. So now I've got to choose which 8 units will I send into battle. Now, for this particular battle, I'm going to go ahead and put my lower level units into the battle. Just because, you know, I'm not really worried about the enemies here. They're, they're not very tough. And I want to kind of spread out my leveling a little bit. But I will keep some of my higher level units in just because, you know, you do always need a little bit of carry throughout the game. So, I'm going to go ahead and deselect everybody and start picking everybody. Now one thing you need to keep in mind is Lynn can never be deselected. She is your hero and she needs to take part in every single mission. So I'll go ahead and throw Sane into here. And Florina's been with us for a while now. She's still level 1. So I'm going to keep her in... Or actually, God, I don't know. I really don't like Florina at all. I'll go ahead and throw Will in there. Erk. Now I kind of want to see a little bit of what math you can do. Of course, I'm gonna need a healer, so there goes Sarah. And uh, my choices now are Wrath, Kent, and Dorcas. Kent, he's level six now. Wrath is level seven. I could use Wrath's range, but I've also got Dorcas and his hand axe, and that's a pretty good range right there. So I'll go ahead and throw him in here. And with that, I think I've uh, I've I've got my uh, my my people picked out. Let's see. Let's go ahead and check map and work on my formation a little bit. And I believe Lynn's uh, position on the map will always be set in place, but as far as everyone else, I, I'm kind of free to choose, you know, where I want everyone to be. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, keep my, my units that move a little bit faster uh, farther back in my formation just because they'll be able to move up and catch up with everybody, and it's not something I really have to worry about. Now I'm going to keep my fighters that you know, are a little bit more close range uh, up here in the front and then I'll keep my range units back a little bit so they can pick off people from a distance. With that said, I think I'll go ahead and save my formation here and uh, start the fight. I see we're facing a shaman hero, and right before that, you saw that another blue unit ran out. He's, you know, not anyone that I've talked to so far in the game, but, you know, he has a blue unit, so it's pretty obvious at this point he's going to be joining my party. I've heard that practitioners of the dark arts are fearsome foes. We'll have to be careful. What? Who are you? Please forgive me. I never meant to startle you. Your robes. They look like religious... Bestiary. I'm bad at vocabulary. Are you, are you an Elamine bishop? Yes. Well, no. I'm only an acolyte, an Elamite monk to be specific. My name's Lucius. Do you have business with us? I was at the inn when this child came seeking help. The innkeeper was afraid to get involved. He was unpleasant. I wasn't afraid of him. I'm used to being treated that way. That's awful. May I please lend you my services? I truly wish to help the boy, if only a little. Of course. Thank you very much. The blessings of St. Elamine will be upon you. Alright, so we've got a monk that's joined our group. 
Um, monks are pretty much mages, except they fight with light magic instead. Um, they have a high magic resistance. They, which means, you know, they'll take less magical damage from enemy units. Light magic is, of course, strong against str dark magic, which is favored by shamans. Well, how convenient. Lynn was just talking about how there's a shaman we're going up against, and they might be a problem for us. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with Lucius and, you know, just see exactly what a shaman can do. 100% chance of doing 10 damage twice. So he's going to, he's going to, you know, mess this guy up right See our, you know, first glimpse of dark magic here. It's pretty kind of cool. All right, Lucius. You know, he's pretty powerful. He might be someone I'm using throughout the game. And we got, you know, this little boy here. I can help too. Nils, can you fight? No. Well, how can you help us then, Nils? But I'm a bard, and bards are useful to have around. A bard? You mean you're a minstrel? This is no place for a ballad or a. Saltarello. Come on, trust me. I'm all yours, hero. It's time to see what Nils can do. The music played by bards allows your allies to move twice in the same turn. However, bards cannot engage in combat, so be careful not to expose them to danger. Alright, so that right there is a, you know, a very, very useful thing to have in combat. If you've got a unit that uh, you know is, has a high damage output or just you know offers something unique to you know your progress throughout the chapter, it might be good to throw Nils in combat with them and allow them to move twice per turn. And we're going to go ahead and you know get our first look at that exactly right here with uh, Nils playing his song for Lucius. He does a little, plays his flute, does a little dance, some flashing light, and Lucius is no longer grayed out. He is blue again, which means he is active on the battlefield and he can make a second uh, move this turn. What do you think? That was lovely. Invigorating, even. You ought to play for me sometime. I could use the boost. Everyone could. My music can refresh you all. Through the power of Nils' music, Lucius can move again this turn. Bards gain experience by playing music. Use Nils' powers often. Increase his skill. Now, besides just leveling Nils up um, through playing, you know, his song, which, you know, he gains 10 XP per, per play, which means every... 10 uh, turns he'll level up once. I don't think that you can increase the effectiveness of his songs, but, you know, ob obviously it's good to level up his stats so you can put him in, you know, more dangerous situations and, you know, come out of it alive. So now, Lucius, he's got his second move, I'm gonna move him up right next to this guy, and, you know, get my first kill of the game. Alright. So we've taken out our shaman. He wasn't very troublesome at all. Now let's look around the map and see what we've got here. We've got a village, which is something that you know I want to get to before the enemies destroy it. We've got this gate up here with you know another shaman named Heinz up there. We've got a house down here at the bottom, a fortress, a fort again that vendor, and two houses up here. Um, one of them is the. Uh, you know, the innkeeper that kicked uh, Nils out. So it might be interesting to have Nils go and visit this house. I can't remember exactly which one he came out of, so I'll have him visit both of them. But, you know, it might be some interesting dialogue we come across. We got another fort here, and I believe uh, we've got... Yeah, right back here we have a snag, which is basically just, you know, a loose log. And uh, if you deal 20 damage to it, it'll fall over and allow your units to you know, move across right here. And so one thing that we can do is we can have Florino rescue somebody, fly them across, uh, you know, dump them over here on this side of the map, have her fly across, and we can maybe move a little small assault force and get them ready by knocking down this snag. And if, you know, timed properly, we could, you know, either finish this map or finish this chapter quickly, which is something we want to do because there's a 15 turn time limit, or uh, we could almost, you know, do a little pincer attack. So I think what I'll try to do and keep it under 15 turns is visit this village, move some troops down here to break this snag, take out Heinz, and uh, finish this mission in under 15 turns. Also, of course, I'll stop by the vendor and see what he has for sale. So I'll go ahead and move Lynn right here. 
and then move Florina to rescue Lynn, and just get ready to start moving some troops over. I'll send Urk over there too, and you never know what's going to happen, so I'll get Florina ready to heal them as well. Everyone else I'll start sending around, you know, this half of the map. I'm definitely going to send Sane up to uh, visit this merchant, and then of course push past and try to visit that village and see if there's anything we can gain from there. Alright, so we can stock up on some items here. Some, you know, fire spell books, some vulneries, and a healing staff. Um, at this point, I really don't feel the need to buy anything just yet, so I'm, I'm not going to do it. But I will, you know, rest my unit there because there's a, you know, it adds 10% to my evasion. Go ahead and move Matthew up here. Dork us up. And will right here. Let the enemies play out their turn here. And we saw earlier in the, you know, a few episodes ago that I did have the option to buy a Javelin. Now, I'll, I'll talk about that, you know, a little bit right here. Javelin is essentially a spear that you can throw. So if you're in a situation where, you know, you're going to be attacked by a couple you know, long-range units, you might want to equip your Javelin so you can counter-attack and, you know, not let them sit back and, you know, kite XP off of you and just farm you a little bit. Or, you know, I don't even know if kiting and farming is a thing that the NPCs can do. I don't know if they can level up. But either way, you know, you don't want them just damaging you with, uh, you know, you doing nothing back. So we'll go ahead and fly right here, drop Lin off, and then fly right back up here. I'm gonna go ahead and have him visit this house up here. Hmm. Maybe I could get some firewood out of it. Hmm, who's there? Who are you? Are you just passing through? So this girl right here, she's gonna tell us about that that snag that I, I've already touched on in this video, so you know there's no real need to read her dialogue here. And I'll go ahead and get these guys ready to be picked up. And I'm gonna push right past this archer and go straight for this guy back here. And the reason I do that is because, you know, I don't see any real reason to stay and try to fight him. I've got four other units there that can you know, easily take care of him. I'll go ahead and move Dorcas up here. Use his hand axe to try to finish off this kill. And remember, uh, Sane is one of my higher level units on the map. So I'm going to use him to damage enemy units, but not so much to finish them off. And I'll go ahead and get right up in this guy's face and see what level is uh, is Lucius. He's level 3, so is Will. Will's pretty close to leveling up, so I'm going to go ahead and have Will attack this guy here and see if that'll be enough XP to level him up. And it was, so we've got Will now, he's level 4. Health, Strength, Skill, and Defense. Overall, pretty good level up. And then, let's see what level is Matthew. He's level 2, so I'm going to want him to come in and get this kill, because he'll get the most XP from that. There you go, don't have to worry about any counterattacks, because it's an archer and I'm getting right in his face. Alright, let's, let's go ahead and look a little bit and talk about our enemies now. Um, They've got the tag Black Fang. Uh, we don't really know much about the Black Fang group at this point. I can't remember if we're going to learn anything more about them. But right now they are, you know, some some sort of faction that you know is causing us trouble. Maybe we'll see them again later in the game. Let's go ahead and move my units up. And so far, right now. Uh, you know, it doesn't really seem like the enemies are paying much attention to this fort, or to this village, but, you know, I don't want to give them the benefit of the doubt either, either. so, uh, I'm still going to try to move up and, you know, visit that village before they, they can get a chance to destroy it. And right here, this guy, he's blocking my path, I can't move Sane past him, so I'm going to pick him off with my, you know, long-range fighters, and then... I'll uh, move Sane right past him. 
And again, you know, you gotta be careful of what items you're using. Hand Axe is a long range item, so I'm only gonna use it for long range combat. Finish that guy off right here. And get Dorcas's next level up. Now he's level 5. He's catching up with, you know, the higher level units in my party. And then Sane can now move all the way up here, which is great. Go ahead and get Matthew right here. And Perseus. Now, I'm going to rescue Sarah. Fly her down here and wait. And I'm going to move Lynn and get her ready to start attacking this tree. Now it only needs one more turn of damage and then it is ready to go down. And let's go ahead and visit this uh, place right here. Yep, there we go. What? You again? Leave me out of this. You're nothing but trouble. Okay, so it seems like we've got no interesting dialogue at all from that encounter. Um, maybe I should have sent someone else to visit. I'll go ahead and... Yeah, end my turn right now. And there we go. That was kind of a mistake there, putting Matthew in harm's way, but... You know, he's very agile, he is a thief, so, you know, he's able to dodge most attacks. He gets a pretty good counter-attack right there. And it looks like Lynn, you know, that was, that was bad positioning for me right there. She, I put her in harm's way. And she's gonna take a little bit of damage. Not something I'm terribly worried about, though, because, like I said, I did pick up Sarah my last turn. And, uh, you know, she's gonna get a little healing going on. So I'll go ahead and move Lynn right here. Now you can see right here we've got our, our take option. That means that I can take Sarah from Florina. I don't want to do that right now, there's no reason for me to do it, but in the future it, it is an option. I'll go ahead and drop Sarah off and move Florina up right here. And let's see, Nils isn't close enough to actually play any songs for her right now, but I think it might work out moving Nils down there for uh, my next turn. Now, what do I do here? I'm gonna go ahead and move Matthew up here to visit this town. So, how much do you know about magic, huh? Magical attacks are special. You can't just avoid them like a sword or an axe. Not even if you're wearing armor. Who's tough against magic? Let me think. Well, anyone who uses magic or stays. Pegasus Knights, too. Hmm. You got others who need to battle magic users? I got something for them. It's a special kind of water. Pure water, it's called. Just sprinkle a bit on you, it'll protect you and lessen the damage you take a bit. Go on, take it. Don't be so shy. It's not like I'll give you blah blah blah, I missed that text. This stuff's strong when you first put it on. It gets weaker as time passes, so be careful. So we've got our first, uh, you know, magical resistance item, pure water. How it works is you apply it to a unit, say for example, Sane, who doesn't have a very high magical uh, defense. Um, I think if the effect lasts five turns, each turn, you know, it, it diminishes a little bit. But, uh, you know, in chapters where, like this one, where you've got a lot of enemies that are fighting with magic, it's a good idea to go ahead and sprinkle some pure water on some of your teammates. Alright. Now we've, we've visit, visited that village, we've got two people moved over here, Lynn's going to need some healing next turn, and I think now we can go ahead and start progressing down. Go ahead and wait right here, move Dorcas right up next to this guy, finish him off, no problem. Matthew already got those nice little counter attacks in earlier that weakened him considerably. And then I'll move Lucius up here and Will right behind him. Fat, I have finished my turn. Alright, so this guy's gonna attack Sane. If I can get a double attack in, seems like I can't though. Alright, so right here, this guy's gonna hit me with some magic. Doesn't do too much damage, but. At this point, any damage in the game is, you know, something that you want to avoid. So, Sane has hurt that guy, but like I said, I don't want him to finish off any kills. So, I'm going to move Matthew up right around over here. And, let's see. It doesn't seem like I can pass these mountains just out this turn, so I've got to find who can do the most damage here. 
92% chance of doing 11 damage. 40. Alright, so Dorcas is not someone I want to be using right now. And 84% chance of doing 10 damage. I'll go ahead and move Lucius up, just because if that guy crosses the mountain and gets close range, Lucius can still counterattack and stay alive and, you know, stay in the fight. If I were to move Will up, uh, he wouldn't be able to counterattack at close range. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the rest of my guys ready for combat. And I want to pull Sane back just a little bit, just because I don't want him finishing off any of these kills. Now I'll go ahead and move Sarah over here to heal Lin up a little bit. Get a little bit of XP out of that. And I think Sarah's XP gain works just the same as Nils does, where it's 10 XP for each hill. So go ahead and rescue and wait. And next turn I'll drop off um, Erk, have Lynn knock down this tree, and we'll begin our assault on Hines over here. By the time that comes around, we should have cleared some of these guys up over here as well. So now I've just kind of got Nils over here. I'm going to move him right here just because, you know, I plan to move him, you know, over these mountains. Go ahead and end my turn. And then, like I said, it's a good idea moving Lucius right there because he can finish off that, that enemy right there. This guy's going to come up and attack Dorcas, which is probably going to prove to be a mistake because Dorcas is going to kill him. This guy's gonna hit Matthew with some fire. Right now, Dorcas and Sane are, you know, level 5 and level 6, respectively. But Matthew's still a lower level, so I kinda wanna see if I can't move him in and, you know, get a kill for him right here. And you kinda level him up a little bit. But it's a little bit risky just because it seems like all my guys are gonna get a double attack in and finish off this guy, which is something that I actually don't want to happen. So, I can attack here, but Matthew will take some damage. He won't even get a kill, so I don't even know if the, the fight will even be worth it for Matthew at this point. So I'll go ahead and move Dorcas, which is my lower level, out of the two players that can make it, get a kill right here. And maybe I'll get lucky and he'll miss an attack. Okay. You don't catch yourself saying that very often. You know, maybe I'll get lucky and he'll miss. Alright. So now I can move Lucius over this mountain range and get Will ready to move over the next turn. Move Matthew up, keep him in these woods. And I'll move Sane up to visit this house. Last house on the map. Blast! Eldwood's late. So it looks, this isn't, you know, the, the average NPC character right here. Um, seems like this is maybe someone that'll be important. He's even naming off, you know, a character by name. I wonder what's keeping him starting to think my axe will rust over before he finds his way here. So we really don't know a whole lot about, uh, you know, who that guy is, but I, I think he's going to be important later in the game. Alright, now let's go ahead and let's see. Let's see how I can play this one out. Let's see. I guess I'll go ahead and drop her right here. Have him play his song. And now Florina can pick up Nils and move him across this mountain. Alright. So I'll go ahead and wait one more turn. Or actually no, I, I am on a 15 turn time limit. Let's go ahead and get this branch down and get this fight started move my healer back a little bit. So this guy's going to move up and try to attack Sane here. Sane's kind of taken a beating. You know, I've kind of put him in harm's way a little bit too much. It's a good thing he was able to dodge that attack though. Alright, okay, so I think I'm on turn 8 now, maybe? I can't remember if there's a way to check what turn I'm on. But either way, you know, I'm, I'm hitting a point where on turn 7. I've only got a couple turns left. I really need to finish this up so I can access that side quest. 
So, with that said, go ahead and move Lin right up into this guy's face. Have her, you know, do some damage to him. Hopefully she can dodge this attack here. She does. Alright, he's got 12 health left. And I believe that Urk will be able to finish him off and hopefully get some good XP from it as well. So as you can see here, just how there's a weapon triangle, there's also a magic triangle. So Anima is going to be uh, strong against light magic. Light magic will be strong against dark magic and dark magic will be strong against Anima. Alright, does anyone need any healing? Looks like Eric does, which is kind of, you know, interesting since Eric and Sarah both join my party at the same time, they're companions. So I go ahead and heal Eric up a little bit. And then I'll move Florina right down here and drop off Nils. Now I've got one enemy down here, which Matthew can access. Now let's see if Sane is going to finish this guy off. Alright, here we go. This will not kill the enemy, as long as I don't land a critical hit. Sane might take a little bit of damage here, but it's not something I'm concerned about since after this guy is dead, he will be the last enemy on the map, or the boss will be the last enemy on the map, and I don't need to put Sane in harm's way. And as you can see, I also got a weapon level up there. Go ahead and move Matthew in, finish off this kill, and get a level up. Fantastic. Alright, so now Matthew's level 3, health, skill, speed, and luck have leveled up. And luck, again, is one of those stats that I'll, I'll go into a little bit later in the game. Alright, as for now, we've got one enemy left on the map, the boss. He's not going to move or do anything, so I am in a perfect position now to start getting my troops in position to finish him off. rest up here at this fort just because every turn you know he'll get a little bit of health left. I'm at the point where it doesn't really matter because he'll you know the game the chapter will be finished before you know I even you know we'll throw Saint back into the battle but it's just good practice to get your characters ready for stuff like that. Alright now this guy can fight uh, close range and long range so of course uh, you know picking him off with my range units isn't you know the best option right now. But what I am going to do is go ahead and move Urk down here, move Sarah up a little bit. Somehow I want to, you know, heal Lucius. Who can do that for me right now? Well, definitely not Matthew. There we go. Nope, did I just do that wrong? I believe I did. My, my mistake. Alright, well, Lucius... I guess he's not really in that much harm's way. So I'll go ahead and, uh... Use him right now. So this guy, you know, kind of asks us, you know, Who do you think you are? You know, you're interfering with destiny. Don't be a fool. And Lucius is a good person to lead this attack just because, you know, naturally he has, you know, an element advantage over the enemy. Next, let's go ahead and let's get some Florina some combat time here. 65% chance of doing 4 damage. Alright, let's do it. And she misses. Fantastic. Go Florina. Reminding me why I don't like to use you. 1 XP. That's great. Alright, Florina. You're useless. I'm gonna go ahead and move you out the way so I can get Lynn in there to do her thing. Go ahead and fly her over here, get her some healing, and get Sarah some XP. And see what kind of damage this guy can do to me. Wow! Alright, 
Alright, so he can land 10 damage on me, which means if he lands his counterattack and lands his next attack, he'll actually kill me. Um, I don't really like Lin's, uh, you know, hit chances here. She, if she lands both of her attacks, she can kill him off right now, but it's a little bit too risky, and, you know, I've come too far to let my main character die and lose the, the mission here. So I'll go ahead and just, you know, kind of form my party up a little bit more. Alright, so this guy's surrounded by, you know, what is it, 10 players? You know, he doesn't really stand much of a chance right now. And he's going to choose to attack Nils, which is interesting. But it kind of makes sense, given how the story is progressing, you know, they, they don't like Nils. Which is, you know, perfectly fine. I'm okay with that, because it means that Lucius is, you know, more safe. Alright, now I can go ahead and move Lin in and try to get some attacks. You know, if he lands his attack here, I'm not too worried about it, because I do plan on finishing him off this round. It doesn't help that Lin just missed her attack, though. Alright, so I'll have a will land that attack right there. He's going to take a little bit of damage, but I'm not really concerned with that. And then Lucius will finish this one off, which I think is fitting considering, you know, he did say he wanted to help the boy, and he's going to help by finishing off the boss of this chapter. There we go. You are only striking at air. You are too late. The girl is already... The girl's already what? Curse you bosses and dying before you finish off your ominous warnings. Alright, Lucius levels up. Health, skill, speed, and resilience go up. That said, we finished our chapter in less than 15 uh, moves, which means that we have accessed our side quest. Nils, where's your sister? Ninian! Ninian! She's not here. Why? Where could she be? My Lady Lindis, a villager spotted a group of men riding south. The boy's dear sister. They must have her. Come, we must give chase. But, but we won't make it. What if they've already... Are you looking for this girl here? Oh, here comes... Uh, who is that? Kent? Yep. No! It's not Kent. Who is this? Maybe that's... Um... Oh, who was it? Elwood? That that man in that house was talking about? Ninian! Ninian! She'll be fine. She's just lost consciousness. Who are you? I'm Elwood, a fair. My father is the Marquis. The Marquis's son. She was with a band of ruffians. She seemed upset. She looked in need of rescuing. Was I wrong to involve myself? No, you saved her life. Thank you. My name is Lynn. I'm from Sakia. I'm Marquis's Kalian's granddaughter. Marquis Kalian. And that's my story. It's not an easy tale to believe, I know. No, I do believe you. What? At first glance, I, all I saw was the daughter of the plains folk. Now I can see it, though. You have your grandfather's eyes. Do you know my grandfather? The Marquis, Lord Hassan, is my father's good friend. I also know that the proud people of Sakia tell no lies. It's true, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. I would not have expected any like Ian Noble to be so courteous to a Sakian nomad. You seem to be in trouble. May I be of assistance? Thank you for your kind offer. This is my problem, though, and I'll deal with it. I see. I'll be in the area for a few days longer. If you need anything, please let me know. Lindis, I'm on your side. Elwood, thank you. Ninian, are you awake? Nils, is it really you? Oh, you're safe. Uh-huh, these people help me. Who are they? Uh... I'm Lynn. I'm glad you're feeling better. Milady Lynn, thank you. I'm called Ninian. My brother Nils and I are traveling performers. Both of you? Your brother's a musician. How about you, Ninian? I... I dance. What? Oh my, you're a dancer. Damn you, Sane. I hate you. You're terrible. <laughs> Sane, later, please. Uh, yeah, of course. A dancer. Your clothes don't look like those of a dancer. Ninius, Ninian's dances... Ninian dances to honor life. It's special. Sacred. 
A sacred dance? What does that mean? I... The dance I perform when we travel is just a normal dance. My other dance, though, when they caught me, I twisted my ankle. I cannot dance to aid you, I'm sorry. Please don't worry. We're just happy to see that you're out of harm's way. Thank you. But I'm concerned about your leg. You can't travel on it. I have an idea. Would it be too much to ask that we travel with you? I cannot allow that. It's far too dangerous. We're being hunted. We never know when we're going to be attacked. We wouldn't be a hindrance. We could even help you. Right, Ninian? Yes. We might be able to repay our debt using our special talents. Special abilities. When something poses a threat to us, we can sense its approach. Truly, that's amazing. We can feel it coming, but we can't do anything to stop it. You're warriors, though, so you don't have to—you don't have that to worry about. What do you think, Kent? I think leaving them here would cause Lady Lindis more worry than having them travel with us. Sane? Oh, never mind. I know what your answer is. Do you do you really want to travel with us? Of course. You have our gratitude, milady. Oh, what's wrong, Ninian? I've lost my ring. Your ring? Not Ninny's grace. The very one. They stole it. Those curs. Was it valuable? It was a keepsake from our departed mother. It was blessed by the spirit of Ninus. There's no other like it in the world. Now we have lost it to those villains. There's nothing we can do. You're right. Can I talk to you, hero? You heard all of that, right? What do you think? I'd really love to retrieve Ninian's ring for her. But if Nilla's right, those thieves might prove to be too strong for us. What should we do? When you fulfill certain conditions, side quests may make themselves apparent to you. Side quests allow you to learn things that aren't part of the main story. You might meet tough new enemies or find new companions to travel with. However, side quests are very difficult, and once you begin to win, you must see it through to its end. If you plan to challenge a side quest, I suggest you keep the save data from the previous mission. Not accepting side quests will not affect your ranking. If you're in a hurry to pursue the main story, skip the side quest. Embark on side quests. Yes. Alright, so there you see it. I was able to complete the mission in under 15 turns, which gave me access to the side quest. I was then prompted to either accept or decline the side quest. Um, you know, for my let's play, I, ch I choose to accept it. You want to help them? That's great. I was hoping you'd say that, hero. Kent, Sane. Those men were headed south. We must give pursuit. On your word, milady. There's no turning back now. Let's ride. Alright, so that's going to conclude episode 7. Um, I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next video.